What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with apparently 100% of my content right now, the spending strike. <laughs> um, there, uh, if you are unaware, there was a community response post from Dismal, one of the heads of the boycott. And I just want to kind of go over it and maybe parse it a little bit, put it in uh, some layman's terms, try to make it a little bit more understandable and give you a little bit of reaction. It'll be quick, I promise, as quick as I can ever make something, because I do tend to talk a lot. Let's see what I can do here. This is our response to your post released last night. General feedback we have received from the community since then. The community being the community of people who are engaged in a spending strike. We have included some additional items at the end. However, this is not the entirety of the community's requests. We will continue to address community needs in order to ensure our voices are heard. The steps are taken to improve the existing state of the game. Now, what this sounds like is a list of demands. This is not a list of demands. This is a list of grievances. These are things that the community feels like uh, aren't great. And here's where it's going to come down to. Whether you agree with the motivation or the actions, you don't really need to worry about that you need to worry about whether you agree with the content of the post so going right into farmable character cadence if you've read the previous post it discussed that they would be adding additional characters uh, at a rate of two a month sometimes they might not be able to address that uh, this goes into the numbers and that's something that people uh, who are trying to pull the wool over your eyes don't do they talk about the numbers now to be fair i can talk about numbers and do a great job of pulling the Wolverine eyes, but let's just look and see. There are currently 19 unfarmable characters in this game. Farmable is defined by this community as a character that you can access repeatedly every day through either node or store. This is not a character who is available in an orb. That does not make them farmable. That is not okay. There are characters that could be more accessible, and this isn't, in my opinion, a uh, slight against the idea of putting characters in limited availability, but all limited availability should at best be temporary. How long does Minerva and Thanos... Or how long do Minerva and Thanos have to be exclusive to premiums? How long did Black Widow have to be exclusive to premiums? Black Widow, kind of less important right now. She doesn't really need to be done for anything, but she's still a character that I don't get to collect in my character collector game. Minerva, kind of important. Thanos, almost doubly down as important. Whether they have plans in the future does not mean we have to respect the previous 8, 9, 10, 24, 27 months of not accessing these characters. So, there are 19 currently unfarmable characters by our definition in this game. The current release rate of four characters per month, which might not persist, would result in 48 characters added this year. By only making one or two characters farmable per month, this year there may only be anywhere from 24 to 36 uh, characters that are still not farmable. If that is an acceptable metric for you, this is not the community for you. This strike is clearly not for you. Uh, to, in my mind, I don't think a new character should be added without a previous character becoming farmable. That's a personal opinion. Farmable, not in orbs. Farmable. And if they have plans to do that, and we just haven't given them enough time before those plans came to uh, fruition, well, you now have to get better at two things, Fox Next, releasing characters and making plans at a worthwhile pace we do greatly appreciate giving a specific date each month uh, to set expectations for your development team and community and i believe that this community is nothing if not reasonable i believe the idea that hey listen we're trying to do something crazy it's a it's a hectic month and we released a brand new game mode we're not going to add a character is understandable how hard is it to add a character to a store that i don't know 
that makes me believe that you sooner look at your metrics to determine if you could squeeze a couple of more dollars out of a character release than make them accessible to the uh, open community. Keep in mind, this does not affect the whales. People like me and higher spenders don't care when a character becomes farmable because by the time they've been released, we already have them as high as we intend to, five, six, or seven star through spending. This has nothing to do with whales wanting more, more uh, character shards. This has to do with the community. This has to do with the game in general. And if you can honestly look me in the eyes over the screen, which you can't do, and tell me that you don't think there's a problem with the access of characters, then I don't really think I need to hear your opinion on anything else. Moving on. New campaigns and orange gear availability. While we are excited to receive additional challenges, the fact that two tiers are being added shows how delayed and desperately needed this update was. No notes. You also spoke of drop rates for gear. No notes. You know what? I'm going to leave this on the screen. I'm going to just kind of do this to show you where we are, and I'm just going to riff on this. I've read this. You can read this. There are good points here. Pause the video if you need to. Here's my opinion. Wolverthor said it best the other night. You're not giving us information here. You're giving us like uh, the LaCroix of information, the almost flavored information, just enough that we, there, we know there are words. These, char these abilities we farm, which, which ones are, will the orange gear pieces that we get for the uh, orange gear, orange raid orbs become more accessible? Because those are accessible in the orange gear orbs. Will we get... Uh, store will the raid store have new rows and will uh what gear will be in there uh more importantly you've added an entire new classification of orange gear we've referred to them as the mini unique even though that's silly because they exist at blue and purple as just regular origin pieces are you going to be adding them to the orb? why did you add them in the first place why now, are there these brand new items that I have to specifically farm? Is it because you wanted to artificially slow down the pace in which people could progress? Don't do that. If, if the game isn't ready, or if the content you've developed isn't ready for the game, don't release it. Or get better at releasing it. You have two options. Don't make the entire game crawl to a halt because I can't upgrade more than one tier 14 character a month, assuming I spend 100% of my gold and cores refreshing the store to buy it. We'll get back to gold. On the subject of orange gear raid orbs, both the standard and elite orange need significant improvements. I disagree. I just think they don't need to exist. Just They just need to be orange gear raid orbs, and they need to exist. Elites are gone. They served their purpose back then. They don't need to exist anymore. Just orange gear raid orbs. Make them great. Add all the pieces that you could possibly get in there, the same way the purple gear works, and you're done. Make them purchasable at 6,000, the way the purple orbs used to be, because they are the highest impact. Players will be able to accrue them at a timely fashion. New campaigns. I've been talking about this for a while, guys. I've been telling you about the new campaigns in my ISO 8 video. I've been telling you about the new campaigns. It was more than just the Nexus. It was going to be a villain. I, I had seen heroes, so there might be more heroes. That's just stuff I had seen. New campaigns. How long has it been since we've been talking about this? New campaigns are great. Where, where, why weren't they here earlier? Why weren't they developed earlier? Why weren't we told about them earlier? Why is this blog post the first we've heard about all of this stuff that we've been talking about for months? And we is the entire community, not the boycotting community. That said, I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression. I appreciate these posts, and I look forward to seeing them at least monthly. So thank you, Fox Next. Uh, I do expect to see these posts monthly, and I think they would help everyone understand what your responsibilities uh, to us are that you believe and uh, what we should expect from you. It's a great management tool. Uh, improvements to the Red Star system. Well, uh, this is, uh, unlike everything else, the same that everyone's been saying. Uh, Red Stars are fundamentally flawed. Uh, most people, at the very least, accept the idea that Red Stars could be better, and um, a majority of the people within the pool that think they could be better know that they are absolutely garbage. Um, 
they don't need there's no perfect answer there's no simple solution to this there are great easy solutions there are great temporary solutions to this i'm not going to go into details i don't need to speculate there are some right here feel free to read those are absolutely phenomenal they are currently saying they're going to give two more red star orbs a week red star orbs are not progression rng is not progression i represent a part of the community that is tired of rng based progression rng should always be a part but not the package when it comes to progressing a character red stars are required at this point in the game to accomplish content required uh, as you have designed content around red stars which you said you would over time and they have not become easier to access two extra red star orbs does not come close when i can say from certainty that i personally and know of many people who are opening 20 to 30 red star orbs a week and seeing very little roster growth if my roster isn't growing i'm not growing and if i'm not growing why am i playing this game red stars we thank you for your commentary on red stars we appreciate them i look forward to hearing what else you plan on doing about red stars but that's just because I don't like red stars. I don't think they're worth any money. And I have no intention of spending any money on red stars, regardless of what uh, other changes happen. Low quality time. Screen time is the second biggest complaint among the community and requires your immediate attention due to its... That's not a real word. Uh, is it? It might be. Anyway. Currently, most players estimate two to three hours of screen time is necessary per day to do everything required by a game to be a member of good standing in a competitive alliance. This is far too much, resulting in burning out your player base. We love this game. We want to be able, with our friends for many years to come. Yeah, sure. It's right here. Hey, everybody. Cool. Uh, I actually have a weird take on this. It's, it, I, I'm a slightly different person. I think there's a difference between required time and access, accessible time. I think that no game, no mobile game, should require you to play it require and that's a really strange word i'm gonna go into you to play it for more than an hour a day over the course of the day um it should incentivize you to play it more than one hour over the course of the day that's a weird word i don't think a lot of people remember that incentivize is oh i want to play this game i can't wait to log in and do something right now uh tiny little issues like oh well, let's try this four-hour blitz system. That ain't it, dog. Like, that ain't going to do it. Four-hour blitz, that doesn't reduce the quality of gameplay. It just means that I now have more specific time that I have to log in to accomplish blitz. Or uh, I could just not blitz, right? That's the other option, just not play the game. So now I'm ignoring an entire game mode, which is probably a bad deal. Uh, Alliance War. Well, on days when I have Alliance War, I literally have to log in every three hours. That, that, that's it. That's what I have to do. I have to log in every three hours, three and a half hours when my energy comes up. I have a specific on time, and then I have to log in every three hours. That's crazy. And then when I go to sleep, uh, we might have lost a war because I couldn't log in to get an attack in because that's just how it worked. How we fix that? That's honestly not my responsibility. I'm just telling you. That's not anyone's responsibility but yours. I'm telling you it's too much. I don't like it. If you ask me for advice, Fox Next, I would love to talk to you. I'll give you all of the advice. I'll make your game so much better. That's me. I'm just saying. Too much screen time. Blitz is not the aspect of it. Blitz is not the only aspect of screen time. Like, let everyone do all their arena attacks at once. Let everyone get everything down. You should reward people for being more active. You shouldn't start with everyone has to be a base level of activity of three hours a day and then those who are more active uh get minute incremental advantages conversely i should be able to log in the game quite literally at any time and have something of value to do for my account whether it be farming because of energy even though that takes me 26 seconds to spend all of my accrued energy there's low quality time this is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the lowest complaints, even though some people uh, say it's the second largest or most frequent complaint. I don't care about that. That's a personal thing. I don't care about how low quality the screen time is. I just care that the time I spend in the game 
uh, benefits me. I don't care if I spend five hours or 10 hours or 20 hours. That's my decision to play the game at that level. That's also way too many hours. But I I don't know. For me, if, if the game is enjoyable, it doesn't matter how much time I'm spending in it. Uh, when it stops becoming enjoyable, it does matter because then I'd rather spend that time doing anything else. ISO 8s. We will stress again, this is not a feature the player base is asking for. Correct. The player base is not and has never asked for another progression system. Uh, I, however, am excited by the idea of the ISO 8 progression system. I like the idea of finding new and, and exciting ways to build characters. I know people from games that have similar systems are uh, more cautious than anyone else. I'm not going to mention any names, but some other content creators have gone on record to talk about them. Um, I did mention that they were a long time ago, about November of last year, I did mention that they were going to come out in a campaign that was specific to them. And I've been talking about that for a while. Sorry, everybody. Uh, and I'm excited at the idea. My biggest concern was and will continue to be if you, Fox Next, believe that ISO 8s are a money giant because you can start charging uh, so much for the best versions of ISO 8s that uh, only a fool wouldn't buy them. That time is that like that ship has sailed. Those days are done. No longer do the whales and the krakens believe that like their specific growth is dependent on how much money they spend on your RNG mechanics. So if you go ahead and release ISO 8s and you do so by saying, hey, you could farm blue ISO 8s, but the green and the purple and the orange and the chartreuse ISO 8s those only come from buying packs or getting them once a week. Well, I'll tell you, you're going to be surprised to realize ain't nobody buying them because that ain't it, boss. It ain't going to happen. Difficulty dial. We respect and agree with your admission that U7 was designed to be too difficult for players. Agreed. I like U7. I like how challenging it is, and I kind of think it's a, it's a cool step in the right direction. I also remember U6 when that was came, when that was released and it was way too challenging at the time. I have no problem with the growth system. I think it's great. We are intrigued by this edition. We ask that you share detail at a time. Now, I talked about something. This is way better than what I expected this to happen. I had said there should just be hard modes. If you're worried about how fast you can release content, you should just say, hey, the hard mode of a raid, the hard mode of whatever we're doing, uh, it's even campaigns. That solves the problem right there. You know, it's it's a hard mode. It's uh, Everything's either 50% or 100% more difficult, and you get either... 50% to 100% more rewards for doing it. That scans, right? Like, if something's twice as hard, it should be twice as rewarding. That's just how math and the world works. So I'm concerned. I like the idea. I think the idea is wonderful. I'm concerned that, again, with all things, you're going to be too stingy and greedy with the materials, and that when you start moving that dial in directions... You're going to make it so that you are required, again, that word come back, required to do this content at the hardest level in order to be competitive. However, the rewards will be abysmal, dismal, or sad. So that's your only note that I can give you, Fox Next. Just, you know, make sure that um, you realize that what you're giving the community is bits uh, of data and not... Chinese food packets of soy sauce or duck sauce. They don't have actual value. Uh, they're not scarce. You could just give out stuff. You don't have to give out too much stuff and then everyone immediately has a maxed out roster. But, you know, I think there's reasonable. And if you want to know what people think are reasonable, why don't you uh, talk to the people? Kind of come up with a nice middle ground. We'll get to that in a sec, too. Ultimate 7 difficulty. Um... Community is highly confused by power level displayed in each node. That's all right. So if you don't know, Ultima 7 has power levels of characters. If you check, they have inflated stats uh, outside of the norm. They have a higher health pool than the average character could. And as a result of that, their power level is skewered. So a shield, uh, shield trooper might have 400,000 health, but be represented as a 65k shield trooper. That is not a 65k shield trooper. 400,000 health is not an amount of health a character can have. That is a 200k shield trooper. At least a 150k shield trooper. So you are deceiving. 
It is you are, that is a deception. That is a lie. You are lying. You are displaying information, but you are not displaying the relevant information in U7. Uh, as a result, the only way I can see that information is enter the node, waste the time in the node, and check it. Um, so while this post has its own comments regarding Ultima 7 difficulty and what that means, I'm going to take the opportunity to address it very differently. Uh, you just need everything to be able to, like, you need to be more open with what's in the game. That's it. I need to know certain things that I don't. I need to know uh, when, if you ever want to do that code where people drop with full turn meter, I need to know that that's going to happen. I don't have, I don't want to be surprised by that. That's not fun. That's not an exciting game mechanic. I need to know. I need to be able to prepare. This is a skill 5v strategy game. I need to be able to use my skill and come up with a strategy. Please help me do that. Contact list. We'll never turn down QOO improvements. Yep. Cool. Thanks for the contact list. No notes. Uh, I'm not going to be the kind of person that says, uh, man, I can't believe this is coming out before something else does. I, I don't care. Something cool is something cool is something cool. doesn't matter to me. However, uh, I would prefer if you didn't wag it like a carrot on a stick to be like, hey, yeah, look, look at this. We're, we're listening. Like, yeah, it's cool. Thanks for doing it. Like, super cool. But like, don't act like we asked for it because what we asked for was uh, the ability to not talk to, but like help our friends in this game. And a contact list ain't it. So thanks, but don't act like this is the best thing you can do. It's just a cool thing you're doing. We accept it as a cool thing. You should accept it as a cool thing. We'll move on. Please give us more safe slots. Uh, Real-time PvP. Dope. Sounds cool. I look forward to it. Uh, please don't mess it up. That's it. Now, these notes are talking about uh, specifics that they'd like to see out of that. Uh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Which, which, uh, make the game mode. If it's fun, I'll enjoy it. If it's not fun, you'll hear about it. I promise. Are there items not covered? Gold needs to be addressed. Yep. That, like, come on. You raised... You can't scarcity can't be can't be suffocating and that's the one thing from the original post from fates that's the most important you're suffocating everybody hey we've raised the level cap so it costs more gold and then also it costs more gold to tier 14 things and also it just costs more gold because you're spending more gold to buy the stuff for tier 14 and also there are so many characters coming out that it's costing a lot of gold to upgrade them and also you're seven starring a lot more characters because you've been playing the game for a while so it's costing you a lot more gold and i'm tired of saying also this is ridiculous. If you raise, if you, anytime you make a huge change, a level increase, a character tier increase, anytime you're doing that, the next thing that should happen in the same conversation is like, also like just add more gold. How much more gold? More. More gold is the correct amount of gold. Like there's no wrong answer. There's, there's like, if you're trying to do the math on what's the like least we can add and people not complain anymore, you're already doing it wrong. Just double the gold. Double just uh, gold orbs are worth two hundred and forty thousand gold. Is that going to ruin the game? Is that going to cause like the newer players, the people you're trying to get to stay in the game, be like, oh man, I'm always broke. You know what sucks? Being always broke. You know what sucks even more? Telling uh, as a streamer or as an uh, anyone in the envoy program, telling people, no, you guys are the idiots because you're spending your gold working on Ravager Bruiser. First of all, why is that dumb? Make Ravager Bruiser not suck. Second of all, let's not make gold be so scarce that uh if i don't spend and i'm getting about two million gold a day hi i'm getting two million gold a day and it still ain't doing anything for me i'm seeing minimal character growth right now maybe at three or four million i might be able to be slightly happier uh, i don't know maybe that's ridiculous maybe four million is ridiculous maybe my entire roster would be done and i'd be giggling about it maybe that's unfair cool three million i don't know all i know is right now it ain't it boss move on uh, players council. So here's something um, I I don't agree specifically with the the, the wording or what they've chosen. Uh, I'm gonna just riff on this. The, the the core idea presented here is like, hey, just make a council of players that represent parts of the community, so we can like mishmash and kind of like pan ideas and stuff. And I'm like, that's a cool idea. But you know what's funnier? Didn't like Combs just quit the Envoy program because he kept giving you feedback and you kept throwing it in the garbage like a like a really bad painting your child drew? Like, how about 
you have this awesome thing called the Envoy program. How about you stop using them as a commercial uh, system where they just go, hey, this will generate hype. Here's the same video to 17 people. Oh, also, you all have to release your videos at the same time, and they're all going to be the exact same. How about instead you use your Envoy program as more than just a commercial? How about you use it as a way to actually let people tell you what their communities are saying? Because I guarantee you, my community is not telling you the same things that Casino's community is telling you, and it's not telling you the same thing that mo Mobile Gamer's community is telling you. And Luke Connerton, what's up, bro? Luke Connor's community ain't telling you the same things. So you got to get your information from people that know it. And Cerebro is getting his information from Reddit and from the people who message him, and I swear to God that dude's going to have a whole bunch more white hairs every time he, he gets a message on Discord. Make... A system in which you, the developers of the game, can communicate with representatives that you select from the players of the game. Because the players, if they don't re accept your selection, if they're like, yeah, no, that guy's an asshole, like me, they're going to be like, we don't like that guy. Oh, well then, okay, we're not going to, like, we're not going to respect me, and then it doesn't matter, so pick somebody else. Make your selections. You get to pick from the communities. Find out and get your feedback. I'll sign an NDA, dude. I'll do it. I'll be like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll like, I, I can do that if I sign an NDA and not tell you about this stuff. If you're like, hey, what do you think about selling costumes at forty nine ninety nine? If like, I think you're you're insane, don't do that. What do you think about selling costumes at ten dollars? Dope. They don't do anything. They literally are nothing. Sell them. Sell them for ten, fifteen, whatever. Who cares? They're costumes. They have no value. If they change something, we're different conversation. Bug fixing. Punisher still counters when stunned. Hella still locks up war. Black Bolt is broken and soft locking war as well. These are a few examples. Yeah, just be more open about bug fixing. You got to do it. Do you guys, uh, if I haven't lost you guys yet, who's still watching this video, like, do you guys think that like the bugs are acceptable? If so, why are you watching this video? Everything's great. You live in a magic Christmas land. Uh, you got to do something. You got to, bugs happen and I don't care about it. But like, be, be on them. Like, bugs are more important than the new character release. And every time you release a patch, it can't guarantee come with not only new bugs, but bugs that we were previously fixed and unfixed. You got to get better at it. You got to be open about it. You have bugs. We know you have bugs. You don't get to be like, if we don't say anything, they won't know. Address it. We will accept it. We will see that you have bugs. Now, you have the known issues thing hidden in a corner somewhere. That ain't it. How do I report bugs? I tell your support. And they say, have you tried restarting the game? Yeah, I did. Because I'm not seven and I've had a computer for my entire life. I know that restarting does fix things. That, however, has nothing to do with the fact that my war attack froze. Also, your support's terrible, but, you know, whatever. Uh, dates on calendar and accountability. This is this is it, man. This is it. Just, I know you're afraid to be committal, right? I, I'm so sorry for you, but, like, you're kind of a company, and that kind of means you have to, like, set expectations and then meet them. So, like, you know, maybe just tell people so-and-so is going to be released on this date uh, and not soon because soon doesn't matter. Okay? In summary, kind of a just a repeat of everything we've talked about here. And, and, and why am I making this video? It's simple. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that are using this boycott to kind of spread whatever message they want to spread on their own. I think there's a lot of people that are like, huh, Cyclops often. Let's see how the whales do. Well, you're an idiot. Just so you know, if you say that, you're a dumb person and you shouldn't be allowed to speak ever. Like, the whales, we knew the Cyclops offer was coming out. We all knew. They told us. They used the word. They said, hey, look, it's like, you think that, like, there's parts of this game that you guys don't even understand. Like, you know that if I spend $10,000 in this game, I get a specific direct line per, like, I get a human being talk when I message in support, right? They go, oh, I'm sorry, Tony. Hold on real quick. Let me help you. Hey, send me this message. We'll talk to you on Discord real quick. That's what the, that's what money gets you in this game. You're, we're not playing the same game as you. And I'm not even the whale whale. Like, I'm playing a different game. Y'all are playing, like, level one Madden, like, rookie mode. And we're on, like, all Madden with entire, like, Peyton and, like, we're done. So, like, don't, don't act like you have an understanding of what we know. We don't get our information from Envoys. We get our information from Fox next. Fox next tells us there's an offer. The reason this boycott took place at the time it did was knowing that Cyclops is such a garbage character that, like, it means nothing to us if you made a release. And that said, even if any of us bought Cyclops, cool. Cyclops is, I guess, a cool character. I'm not a fan of him. 
I'm per- personally, I like punch clops, but like that's a different game for a different story. Like, I, this is not. We have demand. None of these are demands, by the way. I want you to understand it. Not a single thing here is a demand. We don't have a hostage. No one has. You. We don't have any power here. But here's the thing. Neither do you, Fox. Next. You have no power. Nothing. What are you going to do? Ban the top spenders in the game? Cool. What is that? And for the players, do you think that's going to make you stronger? No. You're still going to be the same you you were. There's going to be a handful of spenders that are still higher. The rising tide affects... Like, it didn't even rise the tide. Like, the tide sunk, and now we're all just happy that we're fighting that the strongest person in the game is only, like, 5 million. Like, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. What matters is, again... All of these points show one of two things. Foxnex is intentionally and deliberately making decisions based on what they can give the least and get the most out of. Or two, Foxnex are idiots. I don't actually believe that they're idiots. I don't believe that the devs are idiots. I don't believe that the marketing people are idiots. I, I don't believe that. I have a hard time believing that. I'd sooner believe they're ignorant and they don't know what they're doing and they're a bunch of people who bought an IP for their uh, casino simulator, but I don't know. Uh, I, I These aren't demands. These aren't uh, forced. There's no the, on, the only person who can win in this is everyone. Foxnex wins by making a better game. If, if, if Foxnex improves these grievances or any amount of them, they will in turn have made a better version of their game. And in the process, they will in turn have attracted more people not only to play, but to spend. And because of that, the game will grow. I want to spend money because I like this game and I want to be better at this game. And I want to like you, Fox Next, and I want to give you money. That's my opinion. That's my take. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any comments, keep them to yourself. I don't care. Have a good night. Have a great day. I'm Tony Scangio, and I'll catch you later.